Good morning. Welcome to our morning worship from St. Thomas of Beckett Church, Ramsey. My name is Ian Osborne, Rector of the Church. We'll be thinking this morning about God's plans for the world, plans for good, plans out of love, and particularly his plans for the nations. But we begin by turning to God uh, in the words of the traditional responsory. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. I meant to say, would you say the words in bold, please? Thus says God who created the heavens, I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations to open the eyes that are blind. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A light to the nations, that's what we are. And our reading this morning is uh, taken from a passage by the prophet Isaiah that talks about God's intentions for the nations. It's uh, set on the Mount Zion, which is the home of the people of God for Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-matured wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-matured wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations he will swallow up death forever. It is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That's a reading about the world that you and I live in. It's part of a wonderful vision given to the prophet Isaiah of the state that God intends for the world. The state that God will in fact bring about in time. It's a state of peace and happiness and contentment in fact, the prophet describes it as a great party with good food and wine. It's not a vision of heaven. There's nothing much in the Bible to suggest that our final state will be in some floaty place or white nighties and clouds and harps. That, I think, is all made up by imaginative people. The end visions in the Bible look more like what we've got on the screen party. They are of the earth, the one we know, the one we live in, but renewed. The raw material of God's vision for us is the world that you and I know, but transformed. It needs to be transformed because the world as we know it now is often quite a sad place, badly in need of God's transforming love. Here's the world. The map shows the world as a whole set of countries. And I don't know if you noticed in that reading, the prophet does see God's plans for humanity in terms of nations or peoples. We're not invited to the party as individuals, but as members of groups. Now, peoples in the Bible are not modern states. Modern states are about power. The boundary lines on this map show the edges of who wields power over what territory, which is to say, who's allowed to use violence to lock people up, to use live ammunition to defend the borders, to stop people crossing those borders, even when they have good reasons to. And the violence of states is often used to oppress others, in particular, the industrialized countries of the world, Europe and North America have often exploited a lot of the rest of the world. You can actually see the legacy of that in the way this map is drawn. This is a traditional projection of the world, but it actually makes northern countries, Europe, the, the North America, look much bigger. And southern ones, particularly Africa, look smaller. It ain't the case. Here's a drawing that shows how big Africa really is. How the surface area, 
of lots of other countries that we think of as very big, United States, China, India, fit inside Africa. And the UK is no bigger than Zanzibar. And then on the basis that people matter more than land, here's a different map that shows countries in terms of how many people live there. You can see how important countries like China and India and Nigeria and Brazil are. God's idea for the peoples of the world is that they should be friends together, not trying to grab more territory, not emphasizing the division between them, not turning a country into a fortress and refusing to offer refuge and support for people who need it, but rather concentrating on what builds up friendship. Here's another image of friendship between nations. It could be a map, it's actually a picture of a honeycomb. If you wanted to, you could see it as a map with boundaries by which lots of little countries are divided from each other by thick black lines. But that would be to misunderstand the picture, wouldn't it? The cells are actually united to each other by the walls of wax. They can only do their job of holding honey because of the boundaries. And they need each other if they're going to sustain their shape, their, their structural integrity. If we go back to the map of countries, we should see this the same way. Countries exist, are different from each other because human beings vary. That's the way God's made us. But that doesn't mean we should see each other as divided from each other. Boundaries should be uh, the uh, sharing, the points of sharing between countries. They unite the countries on either side of them. We should help one another, not exploit one another. And when people are forced to leave their home by war or misfortune, we should help them. God's promise of good things is for those who join in with the vision of sharing and collaboration. That is the nature of our invitation to the great party at the end of days. Let's pray now for the world as we have it in front of us. Let's pray first of all for peace. Lord of the nations, we pray that you will help each one to see their neighbours as partners and friends, as boundaries, as points of unity. We pray for places where there is no peace, places where there is hot warfare going on, places where boundaries are points of division and suspicion, places where people suspect other populations because they're different. We pray especially for people who have been expelled from their own land, praying for peace in the Holy Land and around the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that the nations of the world might be generous, particularly those that are rich, that have built their wealth on living unsustainable lives that have very negative consequences for others. We pray for repentance and generosity and for an end to economic exploitation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of the nations. At this time where every country in the world is under great pressure from coronavirus, we pray for political leaders and for those who through commerce or industry or culture have great influence. We pray that they, all that power and influence will be used for good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray, Lord, for your worldwide church, 
from north to south, east to west, people turn and praise you. And we pray that all of your church might be united in love for you. We pray especially for our brothers and sister Anglicans around the world and for the bonds that unite us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's bring our prayers together now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. At the end of this short service, I'll send you out into your Sunday with a blessing. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.